And so we see that there is this new, um, in our market, a new type of uh, real estate, which is the iBuyer type of program. And that is where the people come and offer, you know, hey, I'll give you cash. You, you know, you can stay for 30 days, but here's your cash. This is how much you're getting. And, you know, make it super simple. Nobody's coming through your house. There's no hassle. And super simple. And people are like, woo, I have cash. I mean, this is They're awesome. offering me all this money. Yeah. Like, what does this letter say? Like, I just got a letter the other day in the in the mail. We'll cover that. You know, it has a whole, you know, we'll come by your house. Right. And the whole, um, I guess, the tag thing, you know, or motivation, if you're considering sell your home and do not want the hassle and expense of preparing your home for market, such as fixing roofs, replacing water heaters, you might be a good fit. And I feel like a lot of these investor letters, so there's the investor pool, right? right. And then there's the iBuyers, and we'll talk a lot more about them, is this whole notion that we're going to give you cash for a quick close and take the stress out of it. Well, there's always going to be stress. Like, I think that it's just a misnomer that, you know, you wave a magic wand and everything's done, right? The seller still has to move. The seller still has to find a place to live. And the idea that cutting out the, putting it on the open market somehow saves you money over what you'd spend in commission. I think that with both of us, what we show our clients is we actually add value because we keep your money in the pocket. What the investor group does, the reason they're making you an offer off market is because they want a deal. Well, totally. And so that's the part where we have to really, you know, talk about how much is inconvenience worth. Because in our market, the sales that we've been tracking, we see that some of the inconvenience that people are allowing these offers to come in, they're leaving $200,000 on the table. And so, so they could have paid traditional real estate fees of let's just say forty thousand dollars at a you know million dollar right. price point right or right they can sell to a, a cash buyer right but give up two hundred thousand give up two hundred thousand so <clears throat> it it so we've been tracking this because this is what mm -hmm. we do we're you know engulfed in data because that's how we give our clients the best service and you know help people price properly it's not something that just you know happens with a click of a button um, we don't use algorithms and and I mean we dive deep on each neighborhood and so we track you know some of these different sales that are starting to happen and so we see them and then we can track how much you know the people were given mm -hmm. for their home and that is how we're coming up with the numbers that are significantly less than if they had come to the open market exactly so then so then what an iBuyer does is they take that property that they've paid cash for when the sellers have moved out and are on their way and happily spending their cash, then the iBuyer comes and basically resells the home. And they know that they have, you know, plenty of equity and plenty of money that they can price it much higher and then still continue to collect offers and yeah. get more money. What's so interesting as I've seen some of these, um, net sheets that the seller gets. So you'll have a sales price, let's just use a million dollars because that's a fun round number, right? Yeah. Yeah. And built in to what the seller actually walks away from are things like all of the repairs. So let's say that I buyer said that there's $15,000 in repairs needed. So they deduct that from the million dollars. And then they say, well, we're gonna have to resell it. So there's a two or 3% commission in there because when the I buyer resells it, they're gonna have to pay a buyer's agent commission. So the truth is, is that all of it's built in because at the end of the day, it's a business. These I buyers are corporate entities, they're um, uh, hedge funds, they're, yeah. you know, there's all kinds of different business models built around it. But at the end of the day, they're there to make money. Yeah. And what's so fun to show clients, I think when you sit down and talk to them about, is well you can get a cash buyer and walk away with nine hundred thousand dollars or i can put it on the open market and you can walk away with nine hundred fifty thousand dollars so which way do we want to go like at the end of the day i'm working for my seller to get them the most money 
Right. And that's really the premise of a realtor. Like we work for the seller's net profit. That's our greatest objective is to obviously perform amazing customer service, but our goal is to get them the highest profit. That's why we, you know, spend so much effort and time, you know, to stage it and clean it or curb appeal or whatever mm -hmm. the element, you know, that the home needs to get it the most. And so the iBuyer is a corporate entity and they have a, you know, required net profit that they have to achieve. And so that's the difference where they, you know, are just basically paying for that um, discounting uh, the ability to move the seller out quickly and give the seller cash and the seller doesn't have to have people through their houses. Mm -hmm. um, and I yeah. think the important thing there is if that's ever the seller's objective, because there are real times that like you need to move and they need to move quick. Yeah. Your real estate agent should have a um, strategy for you in their back pocket of here are the things, if that's what your goal is, here are the things, how I can achieve that for you without giving up a convenience fee of $100,000 or $200,000. Yeah, because what we've been seeing is, and this is you know across multiple states as we track the fees, but the fees average between 10 and 16% um, is what we see. And that's not even including all the closing costs, right? Right, right. those are just the, the fees um, and so, yeah, so people that are very, you know, shell shocked about, um, you know, paying commissions or whatever, um, this is definitely a much bigger um, hit to their net profit. Yeah. So one of the things I think it's important for sellers to know is when they get these letters, when they get the phone calls, I've probably received five phone calls in the last 30 days. You know, I have a buyer for your home is to pick up the phone and call your, your trusted real estate broker right. or call Kim and I, and we can s help you through the process of, is that truly in your best interest to sell? L recent stats said in the first half of this year, one in six homes in the country were sold to an investor. I saw that. So, yeah. and 25% of those were iBuyers. The other 75% were the smaller um, mom and pop flippers, local builders. Um, that business model, and then there's some bridge loans and some other financial services in there right. that buy homes and then resell them. Right. But all that being said, I, I feel like people are so in, inundated with this idea and this marketing ploy around it's such a hassle to sell your house, right. and it really doesn't have to be. It doesn't mean that it's not going to be emotional and there's not work to be done. Right. But your trusted real estate agent is going to be able to minimize that for right. you. And if you're finding that they're not, then call Kim or I. <laughs> right. Because we have a great plan and we kind of work with the scenario because everyone is different, like what they're able to accomplish and, you yep. know, things like that. I've had people live in the home while we show it for four days. and um, Or one day. I mean, I have had it where literally they said, I can make myself scarce for this eight hour block. Right. That is the only time I'm going to let people in. Right. And you, okay, I'll come up with a marketing plan and make yeah. that happen. And we still sell their homes and we still get multiple offers. Yeah. So right. we can get it done. Right. I know. We're going to have to write a book one day I know. of all the ex I know. interesting ways that we've I know. Just don't it. fall for the, the corporate language, this idea that a lot of the marketing that you hear out there that your real estate agent costs you money. It's yeah. the inverse. Yeah. And if you're not talking with someone who's in the market every day and someone who's doing a lot of these transactions and working with fixer uppers and estate sales, et cetera, you may have that impression. Yeah. Um, and these numbers are big. I don't think a lot of, you know, people have been in their home for 40, 50 years understand how much money. I mean, they bought their homes for the last one I sold, they $64,000. And he didn't want me to list it for over a million because I was like, well, it's going to sell for one, two, one, three. I think this should be the list price. And he's like, absolutely no. Like he just could. And so we listed it like 989. Right. <laughs> and because you can't list it too low either, right. but they just were overwhelmed by that's what property values were. Yeah. And so what I, what I get concerned about is people being taken advantage of equity being stolen from, you know, that they need that for, well, it's, it's the property owner's equity. They yeah. should fully right. get to enjoy that. Right. And to understand, yeah, all those elements of it. So yeah. 
I think that's it, just to understand, you know, what is your inconvenience worth? It can be worth a lot, especially mm -hmm. in the market where it is still a seller's market with uh, a lot of competition yeah. for your home. Um, and sometimes too, just even coming to the open market, the buyers that want the home are the ones that actually sometimes write the best offer because they are just, they want a home that they can call their own and fix it up or whatever, turn it into their own abode. Yeah, yeah. and that's the real, that's when you have the buyers who can see past the cosmetic things and that for the most part, most things can be fixed with time and money, right? Yeah. Um, that you're not, it's not someone else, it's not a flip. It's not, you know, it's not the white gray cabinets and white quartz and, you know, and that's not what that homeowner wanted. Yeah, it's a buying a fixer upper is a great opportunity to build your own equity right. and put in the design you want. And you're again, Kim and I <laughs> love doing this stuff, so we can help you with that. Or you know, trusted designers, even if you are not a handy person, right. not to be scared off by a fixer upper, because for the most part, most people are going to hire professionals to do the work anyway. So right. it's not like you need to right know how to use a skill saw. Right, right. Exactly. You can, I mean, that's helpful. Right, But you right. don't have to. Right, you don't have to rewire your fire alarms. <laughs> there, are, there are people that do that. So yeah, we can definitely, we can definitely help with that.